Midwestern Fat Mali, have we got a treat for you. Want to ask a fatty IRL? Ready to see my impressive pin collection up close and personal? Then strap in because we are doing our very first live episode of She's All Fat. We'll be at Flyover Fest, a fashion, politics, and culture festival focused on inclusion and equal representation taking place in downtown Iowa City on April 27th and 28th. Check out the show notes for a link to where you can buy tickets. SAF listeners can get a discount by entering our code She's All Fat at Flyover at checkout. See you in Iowa. Weight loss competition shows. Yeah. Brown, brown, brown. Circle of hell. Brown, brown, exploitation, brown. <laughs> I'm Sophie. I'm April, and this is She's All Fat. The podcast for body positivity, radical self-love, and chill vibes only. This week, we'll discuss Haley Kiyoko, fat reality shows, and white aunties. Iconic. So last Wednesday, we recorded this episode. It was our shortest recording time. It was flawless. It was, it was so good. Thoughtful. It was nuanced. <laughs> As before, right before we went to Ask a Fatty, I, for listeners at home, have a tiny bladder all queos do. <laughs> so I had to take a potty break. And I was like, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I get up. I trip over our Zoom recording device. The episode is gone. <laughs> I just want to apologize to God, Jesus, the Easter Bunny, oh. Sophie, our producer Maria for staying up all night trying to like help us retrieve the data. Maria, please like please insert here some of the clips that we did recover from the SD card, um, so the listeners know what we listened to for about four hours. Yep. Okay, Sophie, April, listeners, I wanted to just pop in here and say that Sophie and April mostly only record whole episodes. So we're talking about files that are at least an hour long, and we just got these little tiny bits of like two seconds of audio, and it's just fascinating to me. So I'm going to separate all the files with a little beep so that you know where they start and end, and they are really freaking weird. Um, But yeah, enjoy! Wow. Still something stuck in my eye. Oh my god. That sounds right. That's better. Okay. Okay. Um, test. So, um, we're going to do this again. It's going to be slightly different. This time around, <laughs> Sophie is sick. I'm I sick. am completely so, disillusioned. Our, it's okay. You can ask, will sound different because that was a time before I lost my voice, before I spent the last five days just like hacking up globs of disgusting <laughs> matter, you know? Like, sorry, just got to be real. I love my disgusting, sick body. That's body, body positivity, <laughs> right? Jesus. Um, so, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it. Fatter, blacker, and better this time. <laughs> I'm still very white, unfortunately. Um, all right, so let's do this. Okay, April, <laughs> what are you obsessed with this okay. week? Is it different? It's the same. I'm just going to – it's going to be fresh. Okay, first obsession for this week, Chloe and Hallie, which are two sisters, actresses, Beyonce protégés, yes. are um, – they just put out an album called The Kids Are All Right. It is – mwah. It's Gosh. fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> for people who don't know, if you're not a part of the Beehive, uh, congratulations for having a life. They were in Lemonade for like 10 seconds. Um, Beyonce loves them. One of them played a younger Beyonce in the movie The Fighting Temptations. Anyone? No? What? Um, yes. I think it was Chloe. And then um, they're both on Grownish right now. And they just put out this album that's very like Lemonade reminiscent. Like almost if you were 17, but you made Lemonade. Like this is what it would sound mm. like. So my favorite song on it is called... Um, happy without me. We'll put a little clip here. And it breaks my heart to see you happy without me. Oh, I remember we would say I played out of the game. Look at the stars up in the sky at the night time. It's a great song. They're awesome. I stand them if you love pop, R&B, sisters with amazing um, sister locks. Do you know what sister locks are? Absolutely not. <laughs> They're like dreadlocks, but thinner and women tend to get them. They both have sister locks. Um, but anyway, they are my sister lock 
queens. So check out Chloe and Hallie if you are ready for some more pop in your life. Wow. Next obsession, my zaddy Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> so um, he did this video for BuzzFeed, which we've done with other celebrities. So um, they have them read thirst tweets, like people have tweeted at them, um, just disgusting, <laughs> filthy tweets. And they have them read them and then get very confused. So Jeff Goldblum's is fantastic. We'll put a little clip here of my favorite moment. The word daddy was made to be used on Jeff Goldblum and him alone. Don't at me. What's that mean? You at someone? Yes. Like calling them out. Oh, don't at me. Don't at me. Okay. I accept it. I accept it. I don't know what it is about Jeff. Are you attracted to Jeff Goldblum? I love him. I don't know why. What is it? He's really like, big. He's really quirky. He, like talks weird. He seems very like self-actualized and yeah. sure of himself. He's like so tan and just so so, so sexy. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> I want him to lick lick both sides of my face, like both Ew. cheeks. Yeah, that, that's I what I want. I don't want anyone to. I don't want do anyone that, but, but Jeff Goldblum. All right. Um, and finally, <laughs> new addition to my obsessions, oh. Lizzo. Body posy queen, icon, fashion queen, like want her we to punch me in the face. Lizzo. We stand really hard. She put out a music video this weekend for her song Fitness. I listened to it, but I haven't seen the video yet. The video is fire. Oh Everyone God. in it is the most beautiful person you've ever seen, including oh Lizzo. God. Very hot. Um, I just am routinely inspired by her. Like, how does she keep doing this every day? Because oh you know she gets like bullshit. Like, you know she gets emails and oh, yeah. she's like drag constantly, but she just every day is like, nope, here to serve it up. Totally. Here to be iconic. Oh my God. I look up to her. She's awesome. She's very beautiful. I hope she punches me in the face one day. Yes. Um, those are my obsessions. What are you obsessed with this week? Okay, I actually have a music one. Ooh. Okay, so, <laughs> so as we know, probably partly because of my misophonia and ADD, I like don't listen to music that much. Mm. I do like sometimes, but number one, I don't need music to make me feel things. I think a lot of people use music to feel things. When I, whenever I say something like that, people will be like, but don't you ever want to just cry? And I'm like, I cry all the time. <laughs> I don't need to be sadder. This is very fair. This is um, a fair point. Yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> you have need enough it. feelings. Yeah. Um, but also just like, if I'm listening to music, I can't also really be talking at the same time. Mm. It's like, so when I'm at home alone, if I'm working um, on like non-writing tasks, then I listen to a lot of music. Mm. So I haven't finished listening to this album yet, but Haley Kiyoko just put out a new album. She is someone who I know about because of Queer or By Twitter. So anyways, she's put this new album out. I'm like on my way through it and it's like really cool sounding and like really vibey. Ooh. I don't know. Like I do find that I get more into music if I feel like I connect with the artist mm, more. I'm the same way. So I'm excited to like, like I feel like I'm about to get really deep into Haley Kyoko's stand up. You're about to stand. Yeah. You, you feel it. I like, can feel it coming. In the words of the weekend, you feel it coming. Exactly. So, <laughs> so good. let's play, can I play a couple yes, seconds? Of, so this is from her most recent one. It's called Sleepover. Okay. I'm be friends forever. I can think of something better. I'm just feeling low, feeling low. Sleeping near right next to me, but will you ever miss me? No. The least I got you in my head. Okay, here's my question really yeah. quick. The sound of that song reminded me of Tegan and Sarah's last album sound. Yes, I so loved I that loved it. album. So I'm sorry, is there something going on with like pop queer musicians that like the rest of us need to catch up on? Oh like God. sonically, it seems in conversation. What's, it's just what's going sound, on? It's just the sound of the like <laughs> really purple good. bisexual lighting. Literally, that's the only way I can describe it is it sounds yeah. like purple. The fact that I loved Tegan and Sarah as like a middle schooler should have told you me. You should have known, girl. <laughs> like known. I'm there like singing about like like I love the song from their recent album that's like about I'm not gonna be your like friend or whatever very best friend yeah, yeah, that so one good. that was one song that I listened to like old Tegan and Sarah songs I did used to listen to and feel those emotions mm -hmm. I think probably because I like didn't know that that was something I could experience like nice. femme to femme or like woman to woman heartbreak mm -hmm. I did experience emotions through that song got it man Damn. I didn't realize that till just now <laughs> Isn't that interesting? In full circle. Okay, so that's my one thing. I'm very proud to finally have a new song. I love obsession. It. Like I love. I'm. I'm. I don't know enough yet to say I'm a stan. Like I don't know enough mm, about her. Yes. Do you know what I mean? You got it. You got a third. Like I'm not a real fan yet. Yeah. But You're I feel like way. I'm on my way. Okay, so that's Haley Kyoko. Then just my quick second one is just. Um, do you have I told you about Jeffrey Marsh before? 
No. So Jeffrey Marsh is a like non-binary activist, basically, mm, okay. and is very active on Twitter and Instagram, I think. I mostly follow them on Twitter, and then they have a book out now, and they go to schools and read from their books. Cool. But they basically are just like a queer non-binary activist who's just like... Their entire vibe is just loving. Mm. They let out peace and light. Wow. When I'm feeling bad, sometimes I go to their Twitter and just, like, watch their videos. Mm. Like, I've been doing reading about how, like, you know, ways that anger can be helpful and ways that it can be unhelpful. Mm -hmm. And when I am tired by my anger, I find this to be a very, like, validating and self like affirming cool. attitude to move to. Mm. I can predict the future and you're going to be okay. I don't want you to feel any anxiety about having to have a purpose. You being you is purpose enough. I want you to do what you want in life, but I want you to do what you want, not what you think your purpose is. Don't spend another second looking for a purpose. Spend more time being you. If you want an intro to Jeffrey and their work, um, they were on Cameron Esposito's podcast, Query. Ooh, um, amazing. Two weeks ago or something. But I'm like halfway through the app and just, you know, really enjoying it. I think Jeffrey is like very chill vibes. That's awesome. So that's it. That's what I'm obsessed with. Hell Yeah. Okay, let's move on to some podcast, Apple podcast review shout outs. We appreciate all of you who listen on Android as well. Oh, for sure. There's just no one centralized Android like listening app that we know mm -hmm. reviews on, which will like help us out yes. in the same way that we know Apple podcast ones will. Um, but we see you and we appreciate you. Hell yeah. Um, so here's some people who wrote us some Apple podcast reviews. Thank you so, so much for writing those reviews. ERS. Margot Howard, Ginny Hogan, Sarah Barra 75, May 5610, Folk Liver, and Evenster or Evenster. Thank you so much. And now for our Patreon shout outs. These are shout outs for people who have supported us on the website Patreon, and you can become one at patreon.com slash she's all fat pod. And if you're worried about not hearing your shout out yet, don't worry. We'll, we will get to you. We're just making sure that we say everyone's name. Hell yeah. So this week we got Melissa Mack, Michelle Pastor, Basic Lee, Alana Rogers, Julie Basaha, and Joseph Gould. Thank y'all so, Thank you so, so much. much. Welcome to the family. Thank you for being here with us. So happy to have you. Okay. Corner corners. It's our corner corners. <laughs> couple people have had issues finding the show notes, which I get because they're hidden because Apple, what are you doing? So if you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you're looking at the episode right now, scroll up and keep scrolling and there you will find the show notes. Yeah. I'm working on getting them on the website, but I am behind on everything. So, awesome. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll let you know when they're, when they're there. Okay. Um, next announcement is we've had a couple really cool members of our family um, come up with this idea on their own, which, like, I'm truly honored, I'm amazed. flabbergasted. Like, the people in the family are so cool and kind and great. Um, we've had a couple people say that they want to help offer the perks of our Patreon membership to people who maybe can't afford the monthly commitment of a Patreon membership. So if, if that sounds like you, if you want to be part, especially if you want to be part of Team Paisley Moo Moo, which is $7 a month, and you want to be part of the Facebook group, but you cannot afford um, the $7 a month commitment to be part of the Facebook group, then um, fill out the form in the show notes and um, drop us a line and let us know that you would like to be considered for that scholarship. And, and we will try to match you with a sponsor who wants to be generous and kind. Click that link in the show notes, which doesn't exist now, but will by the time you hear this. Amazing. Okay. Speaking of our Facebook group, just a quick shout out again. This week, people in there are talking about mattress recommendations. Some people posted today about um, wanting some advice and some support on letting go of their calorie counting app, which like shout out to you. Go girl, mm -hmm. go person, go boy, whoever you are. 
Um, and there's also people are always discussing like whatever we talked about last week. So there were some more wedding attendee strategies in there. Um, and as for therapists, this is a great note from someone in the group. I just wanted to read a reminder that some therapists are going to suck. They're people too. And sometimes they're bad at their jobs. When you figure it out, skedaddle and don't swear off therapists forever. Because if you hired a bad plumber, you would just be like, fuck off. I'm hiring someone else. Incredible So advice. true. I know so many people who had like one bad therapy experience yeah. and then they were like, no, Ever again because yeah. it's like vulnerable and scary and then they were sense, fucked up but they're just people who bring their shit to the table just like anyone else if you don't like their shit pack it up exactly <laughs> that's it um we're also posting a link in the show notes to a great piece by lindy west dunking on ricky gervais we continue to dunk we in the facebook group dunk. that insecure bitch can show <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a tip jar from a non-binary queer fat femme hannah Hi, Sophie and April. It's a real live Hannah here. Uh, it's on my birth certificate and everything. I just wanted to send you folks a message because I've noticed you use the term femme quite a lot. Two things. Femme is a historically queer term and should be used by queer people as a self-descriptor. And also, femme is not the same as woman or feminine. Femme does not have a gender and should not be used as a blanket descriptor for feminine people or women unless you know they identify as femme and they're also queer. I'll send you a really neat reading a friend sent me a while ago uh, that I love on some different queer femme experiences. Femme has a badass queer story uh, and I just don't want it to be forgotten. I love you both so much. She's all fat means the world to me. Thank you for everything. Bye. So thank you so much to this Hannah for telling us more about what they think about the word femme. Um, Check out the link in the show notes if you have more thoughts about that. And drop us a line if you have thoughts or voice memo about more inclusive language and ways to talk about inclusive groups. All right. We should really get to the meat of it, don't you think? Let's do it. The meat meat of it. it. This is the part of the show where (laughs) I'm going to get really confused about what I've already said Mm -hmm. this time and what I said last time we when it recorded, and hopefully not leave anything out. It'll be different. It'll be fresh, Mm -hmm. as our amazing Fat Millie member said, um, Maggie. She's awesome. Maggie said, "Sometimes when you re-record after you delete, it becomes different and better." Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. So this week on The Mean Event, we're talking about the ways fatness is discussed and exploited in reality television. Yeah. Born of a couple people emailing us and Twitter DMing us, um, asking about some of these shows that they might like and seeing what we think of it. As you know, if you're a listener, Sophie and I love trash TV. Love it. We both love a lot of reality TV. My personal favorite is depends Kardashians what, early years. I mean, yeah. Depends yeah. what genre. Oh, pretty wild. What is that? <laughs> You never watched Pretty Well with Alexis no. Nyers? No. Wait, you don't know about this? Remember the bling ring? Yes. Okay, so the main girl. Oh, is that, that what that's from? Yeah, it was like 10 episodes, 2008. Like, okay. Wow. Um, so we both watch a lot of reality television shows, but we don't really watch a lot of shows about fat because they tend to be like weight loss shows or, yeah, or like exploitative, but we're going to kind of dive in on this episode and think more about how they exist within the greater culture, yeah. if you will. And just as a note too, some people message us about it. I will not be discussing the like Netflix documentary about doing a, what's it called? A postmortem on a dead fat person. Sorry. It's just called like obesity, death or something what? like that. And it's just like, look how bad it is for you. So yeah, no, I, won't, not, I don't think we need to no, talk about it. I I've think never you heard already that. know. No, that's a hard no. You I've never know. heard of that. That's not entering my psyche. I yeah, refuse. Exactly. <laughs> So no. that's not going to be featured in this. Do not worry. Absolutely not. Yeah. So we are going to talk about not that show. That sounds bad. I picked two shows for us to focus on, but we would be remiss not to mention the many, many, many trash shows about fat people. Yeah. There is Khloe Kardashian's Revenge Body. Those people usually aren't fat, but whatever. Um, My 600 Pound Life, Extreme Makeover, Weight Loss Edition, which uh, the other version is Home Edition. So yeah. make of that what you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to be fat, Fat Chance, Celebrity Fit Club and etc. There's so many, but I want to first focus on my big, fat, fabulous life. This is one a lot of our listeners have um, watched and asked us to comment on. Okay. Before we discuss it in detail, what did you think of the show, like, before we watch this clip and talk about it? My general impression was positive of Whitney Thor. Mm-hmm. She seems to be a cool advocate, a cool speaker, a cool person. 
um, and someone who's like genuinely trying to live their life and like just be positive and happy. I think like the general idea of having someone be like fat and happy on TV is great. I have not ever wanted to watch the show. No. I assumed a lot of it would be either like very justification-y. Okay. Or like just fights. Fights are fun for me to watch when it's the Kardashians or the housewives. Mm -hmm. Because I don't give a shit. Like, who's <laughs> who sent who a text message about, like, the bar at the hotel? <laughs> who's going on the Mexico trip you know and who's I mean? uninvited like, for being I, a bitch? <laughs> like, yeah. that's fun. Mm -hmm. And also just, like, very easy to dismiss. It doesn't apply to my actual life. Yes. And those women are being paid really well to, yes. like, be garbage on TV. Absolutely. And they're choosing to. And, like, they're all thin and white and wealthy, mostly. And so, like, I feel much less problematic, like, consuming that. Yeah. It feels like a more informed choice all around where I'm, like watching a show that they're putting on yes, on purpose. Absolutely. I've definitely heard of Whitney Waythor because she speaks at a lot of panels that like would be interesting to me or that I've been at. Um, and it's kind of like always on People Magazine for talking about being happy in, in her body, which yeah. is cool. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that she exists. And like as we talk about on this podcast all the time, visibility is a is a really important thing to us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel the same way where it's not like Real Housewives of New York where this, this kind of seems like there's more at stake because it's like a reality yeah. show about like, my body, yeah. <laughs> whereas instead of a reality show about white ladies throwing drinks at each other, right. <laughs> you know, it seems like it's not really for me. Like, it seems like it's not really positioned itself to be for me, and it's not something that I would naturally gravitate towards. I don't want to, I just don't want to watch it and feel like thin people are gawking at it. Yeah, Do exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird feeling. Yeah. Um, okay, so I will read you the summary I found online at this show, okay. and then we'll watch a clip and discuss. Okay. So here's the summary. My big, fat, fabulous life follows Whitney Thor's emotional journey after being diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. The disorder caused Whitney to gain more than 200 pounds in one year at college. Feeling trapped in a big body, she struggled with self-doubt and negative stereotypes. Eager to continue sharing her passion for dance, Whitney has learned to embrace her body and love herself again. She also spearheads a campaign that fights body shaming and promotes self-love and acceptance. To that end, Whitney Thor is no longer letting her fear of people's judgment dictate the way she lives her life. It's like both, I mean, it's all the things I said, where yeah. it's like there is the justification there. Like she's allowed to be fat because she has this thing, mm -hmm. but it, but it is just, I'm like, ugh. I mean, I know that that's an, an entry point for people, Absolutely. but it is like, she's allowed to be fat because it's not her fault. Mm -hmm. And then she fights to be accepted for that. Yeah. Like the narrative of it is a little uncomfortable to me. Absolutely. Well, that said, with that background, let's watch this clip and discuss. I don't equate thinness with like ultimate happiness or I don't either, whatever. but I don't equate obesity with healthiness either. I think that You just said that happiness, but I said happiness. Like that's not even the same thing. I realized that I had to uncouple happiness and thinness because I was wasting my life. I will not wait to live my life and I will assert that I am a worthy human being and that I deserve basic respect. That is what fat people want. Last week when we watched it, I was like, yeah, this is exactly why I didn't want to watch the show mm -hmm. because like it just made me feel bad to see like another thing of what happens to me all the time. Yeah. I don't like shout with people on the street. <laughs> but also do you do have to, like we talked about a couple episodes back, you do have to defend your physical form sometimes yes, and I the do. way that it's talked about in the media. Yes. Which is shitty. And on Twitter, this this conversation happens to me more on Twitter. It happens yeah. in our inbox a lot where yeah. people who have never listened to the show see one of my tweets where I say you can be fat and healthy and they email me 20 paragraphs about how actually you can't be fat and healthy and like you're going to die. Subject so line like, science. It's just the delete, like, okay. delete, delete. <laughs> Where I'm just like, that clip I think does a good job of showing, I don't know if how people are taking it is my question. I think it does a great job of showing the kinds of things that are thrown at fat people, which again, you know, as we've talked about many times, it's like totally inappropriate to be like, you should feel bad because I don't think your body is optimally healthy. Yeah. But a lot of people uh, lean on quote unquote health as a reason to feel disgusted by fat bodies. Mm -hmm. And I wish they would dig through that more and find maybe it has more to do with themselves and your own internal their, bias. Perhaps. Yeah. Their fear of their own bodies yep. and their fear of not being in control of their body, their fear of aging, perhaps Absolutely. their fear of disability. Like Absolutely. it's a clear clip of like what conversations actually happen. I hope that people 
would watch it and be like, wow, that sucks that she has that stuff said to her all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of the comments on the video were like, that other person was totally right. Oh, never read the comments. Never read the comments. (laughs) I thought a bunch about the beginning part when she says like, I'm fat and happy. And then the comedian, quote unquote, says, you're not healthy. And she said, I didn't say healthy. I said happy. Yeah. And I think that reframing her ability to do that quick reframing, number one, thinking about it, I was like, damn, she's had this conversation so so many many times. She's like for real on autopilot. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's really sad because I'm like, oh my God, I hope she gets to like take a break sometimes. Mm -hmm. That sucks. You know, I hope that, that maybe somebody would watch it and be like, oh yeah. Like even if they're not ready to acknowledge like health aside in all, in all ways, Mm -hmm. like why, why am I feeling this way about this person's existence? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think aside from the comments, which I will never, ever look at, I would hope that people would see this clip and think, wow, that comedian is like so desperate to talk down to this person she does not know and clearly is like projecting stuff about her own body, as you're saying, onto her. And I hope that that person would not gain like, not pity really, but sort of just like empathy. Like imagine if you're just like chilling at a comedy show and a comedian is screaming at you about how you're going to die because you're unhealthy and you're like trying to chill with your roommate. Like what? (laughs) Like it would be a lot. So like I'm excited that the show exists purely for that, even though it might not be specifically for me. And, you know, in the clip, she does talk about, like, weight loss as sort of an achievement. Like, she does position herself in that way a little bit, which isn't totally body positivity, but also, like, But, you know, I get I'm it. not a super hardliner. No. I'm just kind of like, you know, I think everyone's in their on their journey and everyone's, like, figuring it out. I think overall, it seems to me the things that Whitney says are overall good for the fats. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would agree. Which I think, I mean, I think it says a lot to me that people who listen to us also watch the show. Yeah. So, and they, they seem to be like fans of it and think it's a good thing. Yeah. So that tells me that maybe there is some overlap. Because again, we've only seen this one clip. And I also think it's interesting what you were saying earlier about the positionality of the show being like, she was thin and this happened to her and this is her way of navigating it. Yeah. Just because even though it, it is giving a reason for the, the fatness, I do understand why the show came to be because like behind the scenes, I do work in television and I could see how they pitch this show being like, imagine if a thin person all of a sudden gets fat but tries to love their body. This is what it would look like. Yeah. Like that's an easier show to sell than like, I've been fat all my life. I'm going to stay fat. It's fine. <laughs> you I know? mean, it's just like the reality show version of what's the diva show? Dropped a diva. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Which Where, we both <laughs> like. It was well written. I mean, yeah, but again, <laughs> yeah. It, it is just like, they're fat through an accident. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, but again, it's just, it's like proof of the bias against fat people because you can only exist and be fat in public if you have a reason if or if like it's not your fault. you and tripped into it. Yeah, if you're like, oops, I'm yeah. wearing I'm like, Which is not right. to say that like you're invalid if that's your experience at no, all. I'm just all. saying that like the way it's framed says a little bit, it's bad to be fat, but it's okay because they didn't choose it or Absolutely. something. It, it's just, it's about sympathy, I think. I think it's yeah. like, I can relate to that person, whereas if someone is like fat their whole life and quote, not doing anything about it, then you can't relate right. to them. Like, right. I think it's it's that. And that that's like, that's not Whitney's fault. And also like, proud of her for taking advantage of that positionality to like, get yeah. this message out there. But it just, it says a lot about like, what people think about but reasons for being it. fat. I, yeah. I also think like, it's probably easier for people to come if people have never been exposed to body acceptance. Absolutely. It's this is much point. easier entry point than yeah. like what we say probably. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm glad. So overall I'm like happy that it exists. I'm happy that I know for a fact that a lot of people are hearing about like being comfortable in your body while being yeah. fat for the first time from the show. So that's super exciting. Like Whitney sounds like she's really doing hard work and like, <laughs> girl, take a <I> break. <laughs> So I'm not I'm, screaming at any comedians this week. I'm so no, sorry. Oh my god. Nah. I'm very curious about like if the rest of the show is framed, if it's like honey boo boo framing. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Because honey boo boo seems very, very exploited. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's 10. But I hope Whitney has some more control over it. And again, like I do love Whitney being like on magazines and like yeah. speaking on things mm-hmm. and being like out there. Yes, absolutely. So that is our portion talking about like the docu-series world of fat people. So we're going to cruise on over to the other world of fat reality shows, which is weight loss competition shows. Yeah. Brown, brown, brown. Circle of hell. Brown, brown, brown. Brown, brown. Exploitation, brown. A circle of hell in itself. Um, So let's talk a little bit about our experiences with these shows. Something I forgot the last time we did this episode to mention (laughs) is that I... 
um, audition for the show I Used to Be Fat, oh which God. you mentioned at the top. So if you don't remember, it was 2009, everyone. Shout out to the year 2009. <laughs> um, just a brief a brief chunk where the show existed. So it was high school seniors who were like, I'm going to college. I've achieved everything I want to achieve, but I want to show up to college like 100 pounds skinnier than I am now. So they would have a trainer come in for three months and all the people would lose like 120 pounds in like nine weeks. Oh my God. <laughs> and my senior year, I was like, for sure auditioning. <laughs> so like put together this t- tape and like edited on iMovie and stuff basically saying like hey I've been you know a straight A student I got into my top choice schools but the one thing I haven't been able to achieve is weight loss and then so the other day I was going through my old Yahoo account and I found my like Yahoo? Yeah, Yahoo. Remember sorry. Yahoo? It's I'm sorry. Sophie please it's don't do Yahoo. this. Nope it's Yahoo. Don't do Are this. Are you kidding Sophie, me? Sophie don't do this. <laughs> I feel like I just <laughs> fell into a Berenstein Bears loop. It's Yahoo. Sophie it's okay. Yahoo. Please tweet at us if April. Oh my is God! Wrong. <laughs> Coastal elites erasing Midwestern what are you people once about? again. Oh my God! <laughs> it's oh, Yahoo. Okay. Anyway, I was going through my old email account, <laughs> which was on Yahoo. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and I found my application. The video didn't save, which thank God. But I found my application and I found my picture attached. And I like wasn't fat <laughs> like I, I was fat but I wasn't fat enough to be like I want to lose 120 pounds in nine weeks which no one is Jesus Christ um but I definitely was super in that mindset where it's like you know I think this is something that would be an achievement and it feels like a failure on my part that I haven't been able to achieve yeah. so like as we talk about these shows please know that like you know any judgment that might seem to be coming across like I've been we there, there. Oh, I've we wanted to be there. on a weight loss show it yeah, looks yeah. amazing um, <laughs> like, it looks like a huge achievement it looks like you're a rock star yeah yeah i wanted that uh quick note i'm going to be putting that picture that april sent in in the patreon post this week it was from my winter formal please send it to me (laughs) and i'll put it in the patreon post this week you gotta sign up see that pic see that pic um so let's talk about primarily we'll focus on this chunk the biggest loser yeah so Lindsay, hashtag sorry Lindsay, and i (laughs) we almost every night our junior year of college we would like go get dinner and then go back to our room and watch TV together. Okay. Didn't want to talk to other people yeah. in the dining hall. Mm-hmm. And we watched a bunch of stuff, but we also watched The Biggest Loser religiously mm-hmm. and didn't see, we found it inspiring. Oh yeah, me too. And like, this was also a period where I was doing HCG, which trigger warning here for like disordered behavior. I've talked about this on my Instagram, but I would like go to this med spa in San Francisco and get pregnancy hormones injected into my butt so that I could eat 200 calories a day and lose weight. But uh, anyways, so we would like watch this and it ties into my over overall criticism of American culture, mm-hmm. which is like... We're addicted to rags to riches stories, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like a drug we need to get off of. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> it's like not realistic, usually exploitative, usually harmful, and like not realistic. Most <laughs> stories that focus on an individual overcoming great odds to become something else tend to backfire in the sense of they tend to create a sense in the culture that if you're part of the quote unquote before group, Mm -hmm. you're trying to stay that way. You haven't made a big enough effort and you're lazy. It's your fault. It's exactly the same thing where it's like people who are super sad that they're fat and then they come and then they become thin and then you watch it and then you're like, I have no excuse. I'm a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I got to like get up and and exercise. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Overall bad, but like I do love a, I love a makeover. It's a addictive, it's addictive narrative. It's really Absolutely. hard to quit. Yeah. Can't quit you. Can't uh, quit you. Rex to Rich's story. But like, let's just only look at them at like Queer Eye and, yes. uh, and house makeovers. <laughs> house okay. makeovers. HGTV is the only thing that's yeah, unproblematic that's okay. and safe. <laughs> Everything else is very totally. bad. Does that make sense, what I said? No, that makes perfect sense. And I think that that's exactly why these shows are super successful. It's because think about it, Americans, you come home, you work like a 60-hour work week, you're exhausted. You're like, let me watch something that seems uplifting. Yeah. And this does seem uplifting until you, you know, think about it longer. So we're going to think about it longer here. Okay, so here's a summary I found online of The Biggest Loser. Okay. In this compelling weight loss reality drama, two celebrity fitness trainers join with top health experts to help overweight contestants transform their bodies, 
health, and ultimately their lives. Yeah. Intense. <laughs> so here is um, a clip from Oprah. Once again, Oprah just omnipresent on this podcast, um, interviewing a Biggest Loser contestant to kind of get a, a taste of what the show was like. So Allie weighed in at an all-time high of 234 pounds for her. It's been six months since she got home from The Biggest Loser. Here's Allie before. And Allie's weight today coming out, Allie! <laughs> Was The Biggest Loser sort of like a last resort for you? Well, yeah, I, I dug myself into this big, deep, dark hole, and I didn't know how to get out. You yeah. know, it was five pounds, five pounds. That so was somewhat controllable. But then it was 50, and then it was 100, and I was like, how do I get out of here? Yeah. So that's doing? usually how those stories on The Biggest Losers go, kind of like big overall triumph. And then usually what happens is this. Didn't post, and I was depressed, and I was embarrassed and I was sad and I was like, I can't even like, I'm at such a place in my life right now that I can't even post on Facebook about this experience that changed my life in such a drastic way where that I even have this Facebook to post to and now I'm hiding, like I was hiding. The As far as gaining the weight back, that's something that I want to say all Biggest Loser contestants have yeah. gone through, which is usually gaining the weight back and more, which is similar to what we were saying earlier. We'll put uh, the link in the sh in the show notes for the New York Times article that just is all of them. And then it's like, turns out we don't know how to fix metabolism. Yeah. And turns out you can't drop that much weight in six weeks and have your body keep Be it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Your body is like, uh... Are we, like, wh what, what happened? What, bitch, what are you doing? Are we doing? starving? <laughs> are we yeah. okay? Um, so not only did that happen to Allie, but it's happened to a lot of Biggest Loser contestants. And there's one Biggest Loser past contestant named Kai Hibbard, who is incredible. She did an article where she got into the nitty gritty of what happened behind the scenes. And I'll read a little um, excerpt from an article she did about it. Okay. At one point, she collapsed. I thought I was going to die, she says. I couldn't take any more. Her trainer yelled, get up, then made a comment about a sick and overweight relative. I got up, she says. You're just in shock. Your body's in shock. All the contestants would say to each other, what the fuck just happened? The trainers, she says, took satisfaction in bringing their charges to physical and mental collapse. They'd get a sick pleasure out of it, she says. They'd say, it's because you're fat. Look at all the fat you have on you. And that was our fault. So this was our punishment. So behind the scenes of The Biggest Loser is very dramatic. Like later in this article and on other platforms, she said they like wouldn't let them drink water because water would affect their weight Way and in. you have to have the weigh in at the, the, the live tapings and they would keep them isolated from their families and they would just like, yeah, give them all this negative self-talk like it, it just basically would just be like this is your fault and you've done this to yourself so like dig your way out of it by like throwing this tire it's always tires or like heavy ropes throw <laughs> oh these heavy gosh. ropes they made them work out for like eight hours a day which yeah. is not good not for okay. you They're, like in pain not sustainable not sustainable like how do you expect to keep that off so that's kind of like the yeah what it looks like behind the scenes and the reality of it is like these people are torturing themselves so we get the moment in the finale where it's like you're down 157 pounds in a month yeah it's wild <laughs> it's wild i mean it's hard because there are some aspects of it that i enjoy like for example i do think that a lot of fat people carry trauma in their bodies. Absolutely. Like a lot of fat people probably do have, like I do for sure, have experience with emotional eating and some weight gain from like trauma and and eating because of trauma or eating to deal with things. And that stuff is hard to work through and you need to work through it. So it's like, they're not wrong always when they're like, you need to let go of the pain or yeah. whatever, but it's like not this way. No, this is abusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. I also think that this show does a bad job. I mean, <laughs> a, a lot of things, <laughs> but it does a bad job in presenting, like it's not supposed to present exercise as something everyone can do. Mm -hmm. Where So it's like, it's it was hard for me to see fat bodies exercising only like in ways that would make them throw up basically. Yeah. It's like pushing away past their limit. Yeah. yeah. Instead of it being like, like it's one of the narratives that made me believe that exercise always had to hurt mm -hmm. and I always had to be in pain for it to be a real workout. You lose weight from exercising and eating differently and then you feel like you've done a huge accomplishment. You feel yeah. like you finally overcome things. It, it comes back later most mm -hmm. of the time. But like that feeling is what they're making, they're splashing up on the screen in this. And it's really hard to 
like let go of it when it's the only thing you're seeing your body on. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? And especially if that's the last time you see it. So people yeah. think, like in their heads, if you're not following these articles, you think, and then they overcame it and they were happily ever after. Right. And you don't know about the after. You don't know about Kai Hibbert or you don't know about Allie and you don't know about all the other people who are like, not only did I gain all the weight back, but I felt shame about it because the last time people saw me, I was on TV yeah. saying, I'll never be fat again. Yeah. When they, in reality, like you don't have control over your body. You Sorry. If for more insight on the behind the scenes of The Biggest Susan, I'm going to link Kai Hibbert's episode of Food Psych with Christy Harrison, an Which awesome we'll podcast that we will both be on. Um, this episode was dope. Like, she really got into it and was like, this is fucked up. She's spending her life, like, making people know that you cannot lose this amount of weight in these extreme conditions. So shouts to Kai for doing that work because we know it's hard. Yeah. It's, like, real hard. And finally, I just wanted to point to this study. So someone did study, like, how do weight loss competition shows affect how people think about fat people and how they interpret them. So I'm going to have Sophie read this paragraph because I can't read big okay. words. <laughs> I can read, but I can't read. Okay. So here we are. Exploratory analyses examining moderation of the condition effect by BMI and intention to lose weight indicated that participants who had lower BMIs and were not trying to lose weight had significantly higher levels of dislike for of overweight individuals following exposure to the biggest loser compared to similar participants in the control condition. These results indicate that anti-fat attitudes increase after brief exposure to weight loss reality television. So basically people watch The Biggest Loser and they hear the trainer shouting at them, this is your fault. And then people think, yeah, you're right. It is their fault. And it makes them hate fat people more. Yeah. Um, so finally, last time we recorded this, we talked about what would our dream like fat reality show look like. Oh, I like, don't remember what I said. Wait, you don't? Uh-huh. Oh my God, it was so smart. Okay, I'll remind you and then you talk about it again. <laughs> okay. The part of The Biggest Loser that's inspiring is it seems like people are like, oh, I now can feel proud of the body that I'm in, whereas before I felt only disgust with it. So we're like, okay, what if a... What if a body positive reality show existed where it was like, here's how you learn to move in a way that suits you and that is fun and not punishing. Like, here's how you eat for yourself in a way that makes your body feel good. Not about weight loss. You're great. (laughs) That kind of reality show. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah. You don't remember this. I don't remember at all. This was all all your idea. I love my idea. It was a great idea. I love my curvy idea. (laughs) I love your curvy idea. But yeah, no, I I just love thinking about this. Like, if we could live in a world where, like, all the diet culture BS is dead, what would our dream reality? I want like fat Kardashians also. Oh my god! Just like going to torrid, chilling. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want to see fat people having drama that's not about being fat. Yeah, because we have other drama. Yeah. <laughs> like lots of other yeah, drama. Exactly. So I just I just would want a reality show where a fat person exists and it's about their life. The fat comes up, but it's not like it doesn't have an agenda. Like it's not here to prove that fat people deserve respect. It's just their life. The same way that we just watched Kim Kardashian order that salad from that place in the Valley. (laughs) There's so many conversations about that fucking salad place. I now know exactly where it is and we'll, we'll go one day. (laughs) Um, I have another one. Yes. What if it were just somebody who was fat Mm -hmm. became thin and stayed thin? They are out there. They're rare, but they're out there. And their job is to go around and do like Ayanla style fix my life sessions with thin people who hate fat people. Oh my <laughs> God. I love this. And she's like, you're, you're like, get into that anti fat bias. Yeah. Like, what the fuck and then is at going the end, on? They're just like, my mom's mean. <laughs> exactly. To me. I'm just exactly. Like, it's I was okay. fat in yeah. elementary school. Yeah. Like, I know, whatever. I would love that. That would be so good. Right? That would be so good because, again, like, that's my favorite <laughs> type of allyship is where, like, white people figure it out amongst themselves. Like, yeah. thin people figure it out amongst themselves. Yeah. And, like, acknowledge the real struggles. Like, I get that you probably were called fat as a kid and it hurt and now you spend your whole life trying to ignore that. I know that that would be hard. That does not give you an excuse to be shitty to me. Yeah. But I get it, but I would love to see that on TV, like them trying to figure it out and having like a coach where it's like, here's a fat person. What do you think about their body? It's disgusting. Yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) That would be so good. Just like empathy exercises. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see fat housewives. Right. (laughs) Like, give me trash television that's not exploitative, please. Because I will watch it. I'm not saying fat should not be discussed on reality that's like not, no, not realistic and I want I want to be talked about in a bunch of different like media outlets but I also want to be respected and yeah. not have media exist that will only make my personal life like harder that's also, all I want yeah so we want to see reality television do better and fat I fat dashians fat give me fat dashians give me real fat wives of fat york <laughs> I need it. I'm oh here for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please. It. All right. Well, that's the meat of it for this week. We have um, analyzed fat reality TV. You're, You're welcome. welcome. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Tomboy X. The seasons are changing, so should your underwear. They offer tons of different options in sizes extra small to 4X, and they carry loungewear, activewear, and underwear. From bikinis to briefs to boxer briefs to trunks and boy shorts, Tomboy X has got you covered. Their activewear line is made from eco-friendly fabrics that are quick dry and moisture wicking, making their products ideal for swimming, working out, adventuring, or all three. I recently did a photo shoot rocking my iconic briefs and essential soft bra in white. Not only did I feel fully supported, but I also felt cute as hell. You were. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is our new code. Go to tomboyx.com slash SAF15 and check out their special bundles and pack pricing. She's All Fat listeners get an extra 15% off with code SAF15. Again, code SAF15 for an extra 15% off. Ditch whatever you're wearing for a pair of Tomboy X underwear. Go to tomboyx.com slash SAF15. And now it's time to ask a fatty. Yay. Hell yeah. If you want advice, you can send a voice memo of yourself asking a question to FYI at she'sallfatpod.com. You can record it on your computer or the voice memo app on your iPhone. Just keep it short, about one minute max. Or if you're shy, you can send us a plain old email at FYI at she'sallfatpod.com, and we might answer your question right here on the show. Um, quick note here, we absolutely love getting like advice questions and we love helping y'all out the best we can, even though we're not experts and I personally don't know anything. (laughs) That said, I would also love like some fun questions. Like perhaps if you wanted to ask me, I don't know what my favorite episode of Liz McGuire is. I might say season two, Dear Lizzie, where (laughs) Lizzie has an advice column and Gordo writes in telling his feelings. I I don't know. That's just like what came up. So we would love some of those too, but also we love helping y'all out because I get it. Life is hard, but I want to talk about Liz McGuire more than I already do. Um, so this week, <laughs> this week on Ask a Fatty, we have a very special letter from Hannah. Okay, so we actually have a mini letter and then mm. a longer letter. Heck yeah. So last week we did a wedding question. This week we have a wedding question the other way. Okay, so this Hannah says, I am getting married. I suppose I am a small fat. 12, 14. One of my bridesmaids is a four to five X. I have done everything I can to make sure she feels comfortable and happy. I picked out a dress store online that goes all the way to size 30 dress. And I have always done my best to be validating, kind and stick up for her when people can be just plain cruel. What can I do at my wedding to make sure she feels confident, secure, and anxiety free? We have over 250 guests. What can I do for myself to feel that same way? First of all, damn, yeah. big ass wedding. I know. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I love hearing this perspective because it's like this is our our dream for all bridesmaid Hannahs is yeah. they have someone that's thoughtful while like, they go through the process. To think about this. Yeah, that's so nice. Wow. Um, what is our advice for how they can feel more confident? Play Lizzo. Play Lizzo. <laughs> yeah. I also think like just making sure that all of the ceremony is accessible, like mm-hmm. the chairs. <laughs> oh, big thing. Big thing. Make sure those chairs are comfy. Just have them armless. Just, just go armless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also just like it was really smart of you to do the dress store online that makes sure like just check in with your bridesmaid perhaps. Make sure that she's finding a dress that suits her, mm-hmm. that she feels comfortable in. And then just like you could just ask, you know, all the way from, hey, fatty, are you going to feel fat and comfortable at my wedding? <laughs> or yes. what, mm-hmm. all the way to like... <laughs> Damn, that's me. <laughs> I mean, depends, you know? Yes. All the way to like, hey, um, I hope... I'm like so excited to have you be in my bridal party. Is there anything I can do to make my wedding a happy and comfortable space for you? Totally. That would um, be so thoughtful. Yeah. yeah, I think in general, just trying to cultivate a like fun environment because a lot of people go into weddings like this is the most important day of my life and if you don't make it perfect I'll fucking kill you (laughs) where it's kind of like you're like hey this is fun like celebrating my love I want you to feel comfortable tell me what you need and people once they feel comfortable will totally be open with you and be like let's do our most chairs (laughs) yeah remember that no moment is perfect honestly Mm -hmm. and you are there with like people you love and who love you and just try to like enjoy the the moment and anything annoying that happens it's like a great story i love hearing annoying wedding stories totally what what goes wrong and mm-hmm. how you overcome it exactly so this um our question from last week was discussed in that facebook group um our patreon facebook group sign up patreon.com slash she's all fat bad <laughs> but one person said quote looking different doesn't mean the same thing as looking bad i hope at that wedding you can tap into that truth a little bit because you deserve to feel good in the body you have right now So I'd say that's true for this Hannah and for last week's Hannah, just that like, if you feel like you look different from the other bridesmaids, if you feel like you look different because you have to wear a different style of dress, it's like, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. Absolutely. Um, Okay. 
Let's move on to our longer question. Hi, Sophie and April. I'm Hannah, a teenage chubby listener from New York. I recently listened to your State of the Fat Union, and I was really intrigued uh, about your little Weight Watchers bit. I've been on Weight Watchers since September, and at first it was because I wanted to lose weight, you know, because diet culture. But now I've been getting more into self-love, and I've really been using it as a tool to help me with my eating disorder-like behavior and to help me eat more intuitively and eat more healthily and eat properly and not overeat and not undereat. Uh, I stopped weighing in because that's BS. And I've been really happy with the body I have while on Weight Watchers. Recently wore my first bikini, what up? Um, but I was wondering if um, I could still be body positive and still be a part of that community while on Weight Watchers. Or am I really doing just a disservice to the whole community by continuing to support something that makes fat a bad thing, um, even though it has helped me a lot with intuitive eating. Uh, I was really just want to know your thoughts on that. Love you guys so much. Thank you. Yay. Love this, Hannah. Shouts that to your fat so kini. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I also identify as chubby, so same. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. I would suggest that this Hannah considers moving to working with a health at every size or, like, intuitive eating or body positive like nutritionist, Mm -hmm. um, who can like talk about this more with you if, you know, you're looking to delve more into that. Yeah. I'm curious what, what you mean by intuitive eating. I think like if, if you just mean like you've been forced to pay more attention to how you feel and what you're consuming, that makes sense to me, but that's not intuitive eating really. I also think like, yeah, I think it would be pretty hard as you get further into body positivity to, be engaged in a community of other people who are only trying to lose weight. The environment is not... It's called Weight Watchers. It's called Weight Watchers, and it's not suited for your pursuit, which is, like, intuitive eating and being healthy and trying to control your, like, past stuff. Exactly. (laughs) But I think what you're really asking is, like... Do, do I have to be perfect to be body positive? Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. absolutely not. Like, and that's our perspective. Like yeah. there are different perspectives in the community, but my, oh, for sure. but how I feel is like you're a person and you're yeah. trying your best and it's not fair to say you could never lose weight. You can never write down what you eat. And if you do, you're a failure. You like never it's not have these thoughts or no, those thoughts or whatever. I people. think like, yeah, if you like feel that tracking your food in some way is helpful to you, I would say that I think there are more body positive ways to do that yep. that also don't give money to an organization that is so like fat negative mm-hmm. but also like you know working with a health at every size nutritionist can be cost prohibitive so you don't have to like give up everything totally all, it's like a it's a long process it's a lifelong thing like yeah. trying to unlearn all this shit so like please give yourself lots of grace you're a teen yeah there's a lot going on you know overall do i think weight watchers fits into a body positive framework No, Mm, not really. But how is it functioning for you? How are you learning from it? How are you applying what you've learned from body positivity to your experiences within it? Those are all super individual. And I'm never going to sit here and be like, you're, you're, you're out. We're not going to tell you, you betrayed us. Never. Never. Like we've been there. We're here for you. I get it. You're doing your best. We're all doing our best. It is what it is. But yeah, same as what Sophie's saying. I would encourage you if you can't afford like a special dietitian, which I understand that's like super expensive, just try to get into like the online resources for Hayes and everything that's available sort of in I think refocusing your definition of intuitive eating could be super helpful. And yeah, that's a journey. I'm not great at it. I don't really know what I want because I've been on diet since I was five. Thank you so much for writing in. I hope this was helpful. And I hope that um, you continue to check in and let us know on your body positive journey, how things move forward. And I wonder if in like six months you might feel differently. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Keep us posted, Hannah. Thanks, Hannah. Now let's move on to It's Okay You Can Ask, a segment that I tell people we do so that I can explore the complicated nature of whiteness, but I really just like seeing Sophie squirm. We'll find out the answers to our burning questions like, white people eat mac and cheese as an entree? Or who is Sana Lathan? And why would she bite Beyonce? So this week's question inspired by last week's episode of Steel Processing, which I don't know if you heard, but it's about aunties. I did not hear it. Okay. It's a great one for everyone listening at home. 
Um, my question to you is, who are the aunties of white culture? You've already asked a question like this. You already asked about cousin culture. This is very different. <laughs> very different. <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bless your heart. Okay. So let me give you some examples. Aretha Franklin would be one. Sassy auntie, like the video I showed you, Nice Gowns, Beautiful Gowns. Loretta Devine, I wonder if you know who this is. She's kind of like a figure in like black popular culture as just like someone there to comment on your life and be like, okay. oh no, sweetie. That's what her voice sounds like. Um, trying to think. Angela Bassett would be considered an auntie and just kind of like traveling the world, visit, give you $100, go back to her like Italian lover type of auntie. So when I was thinking of white aunties, the first person that came to mind was Reba. I okay. think Reba might be an auntie. Not okay. totally sure. The person sure. I was thinking of is um she played the main uh the main witch in Hocus Pocus. What's her name? Bette, Bette Midler. Midler. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Bette Midler. We both we both found that. Bette Midler is absolutely an auntie. What kind of auntie huh. is she? I don't know because this is not something we we've talked about. Well, okay. In just in your own words, just like, like what's her type? Like what would she, yeah? Like what's her type? Like okay, like Bette how Midler, does she come across? Bette Midler's type in real life seems to me to be pretty close to the role she played in the reboot of The Women, starring oh, Meg yeah. Ryan, a Hollywood screenwriter who likes chain smokes and nice. wears like Kabbala stuff. I always imagine her in like scarf, 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 scarf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a million. But I don't know, like what you would call that? Just like. Like, Jewish Hollywood auntie? That, that's a type of auntie, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think this has to do, again, with, like... I mean, I know there's lots of different kinds of blackness, but, like... Yes. Again, this is where it's, like... There's so many kinds of white people where I'm just, like, I don't relate to you at all. Yeah, exactly. Who else would be <laughs> a white auntie? I just feel like we're just naming women. Um, <laughs> like... Okay, Sharon honestly, Stone. pause. I will play a clip from the Still Processing episode. Diane Keaton? Is she an auntie? Diane Keaton? Yeah, she's for sure an art, auntie. Art auntie? <laughs> art auntie. You're okay. getting it. You're getting it. This is just like types plus auntie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. So we're talking about aunties, which is different from an aunt, which is just the sibling or the sister of your dad or your mom. Right. But what does an auntie mean to you? So in my understanding, my, my appreciation of what an auntie is, she does her. She's living her life. Mm -hmm. She spreads joy and love, not bitterness. She's a little grandiose, a little self-absorbed, but maybe wise and a little mystical and silly and coolly clueless. Maybe she's drunk, but that's okay. That's okay. I honestly think that black culture is more inclusive towards women of that age group. Mm-hmm. I think white celebrities, it's, you know, you're either Jennifer Lawrence or your current Diane Keaton. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. we don't have a lot of mid-range, like, all the mid-range white celebrities who are women who I can think of, or it's, like, not, like, who who even is it? Like, the two, like, like, Allison Janney. Oh, she'd be an auntie, maybe. Politics auntie? <laughs> like, I, I was know. I was also thinking of Susan Sarandon, like, socialist auntie. Oh, I hate her. Though. Yeah, everybody hates her. I don't know. Is there like a childless aspect to this? I think there is a childlessness to it. Not that the actual person has to not have children, but just that their existence isn't defined by motherhood. Like kind of this like independence mm -hmm. a little bit. I'm trying to think of who else. But yeah, for some reason Reba really came to mind when I started thinking of this. I just feel like Reba has her own personhood, you know? I, well, yeah, Reba's a single mom who works too hard. She <laughs> loves her kids and never stops. Is this a thing the song? Heart, <laughs> but something in the soul of a tiger. <laughs> I'm a survivor. I used to watch a lot of Reba with my sister. I'm Reba. <laughs> wow. What's up, y'all? <laughs> She's always shouting. But it is interesting that she has such good timing for someone who's just a singer. <laughs> Like, none of these are as spicy as, like, the ones spicy. you... Yeah. All the ones you mentioned, like, the, you mentioned them all with a, like, sassy thing that they've said. Well, what about, like, Joy Behar? She can be, She's fun. I like Joy okay, Behar. So, basically, we're saying it's, like, just Jewish women in their 40s. Is Joy Behar Jewish or she's yes. Italian? Because I remember seeing a sketch about this at some point. What? On SNL. She's Roman Catholic, Italian. Really? Okay, what about Full House Uncle Joey? Is he an auntie? 
You know what? <laughs> I think Uncle Joey is an auntie. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have cracked it. Truly cracked it. Okay. Because he's like, those kids are nuts. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> back to these bitches I'm chopping down. <laughs> That's literally it. That is it. Okay. And that's our show. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the stuff we mentioned today. And don't forget to send us your questions via email or voice recording to FYI at she's all fat pod.com. Please make sure to leave us a review on Apple podcasts. It's super important in making sure people find the show. If you leave us a review on Apple podcasts, we'll give you a shout out on the pod next week. She's all fat is created, produced and hosted by us. Sophie Carter Khan and April K. Quio. We are an independent production. If you'd like to support the work we do, you can join our Patreon by visiting patreon.com slash she's all fat pod. When you pledge to be a supporter, you'll get all sorts of goodies and extra content. This week, we're posting more information, resources, and a picture of April <laughs> applying for that show just for our <laughs> Patreon supporters. Our music was composed and produced by Carolyn Pennypacker Riggs. Our website was designed by Jesse Fish, and our logo is by Britt Scott. This episode was mixed and edited and tried to recover but could not <laughs> by the iconic Maria Rotel. I'm so sorry. Our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter handles are at She's All Fat Pod. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and wherever else you get your pods. Bye. Bridge, how could I forget that I had given her an extra key? All this time, you were thundering that she never took her eyes off me. So, if you were to hear that, would you know what that is? Not only do I know Shaggy's, it wasn't me, but I know more words than you. <laughs> But I know the gist. <laughs> Do I not? <laughs> All white people know Confessions Part 2. Okay, but not Part 1. No. <laughs> um, remix to Ignition mm-hmm. and Shaggy's It Wasn't Me. That's the end of the list? Yeah. <laughs>